Today I want to call your attention to the gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Again, that's the gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning at verse 1. Jesus spake these words and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son also may glorify you. As you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have glorified you on earth. I have finished the work which you have given me to do. And now, O oh Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. I have manifested your name to the men whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they have known that all things which you have given me are from you. For I have given to them the words which you have given me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came forth from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I do not pray for the world, but for those whom you have given me, for they are yours. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father, Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are one. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. Will you pray with me? Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help I know. If thou withdrew thyself from me, to whom and to where could I go? Now, Lord, we come during this Memorial Day weekend, asking you to breathe on us your divine Holy Spirit. Hide me behind the cross, God. Let the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight. This is your service prayer. Amen. Today's lesson comes from the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, reading verses 1 through 11. And today I simply want to use for a subject or a topic or a title an example of intercessory prayer, an example of intercessory prayer. For the last several weeks, we have spent a great deal of time sharing with the body of Christ the death, 
the burial, and the resurrection of a risen Savior. We have spent time discussing how Mary and the other women went to the tomb to anoint the body of Jesus. We have discussed how they went to Peter and John to share the news about the risen Savior. And we have shared with you how Jesus spoke with two men as they walked towards Emmaus. The truth is, is that we have barely stretched the surface when we begin to talk about Jesus and how he came to preach the gospel to the poor. We have barely stretched the surface when we talk about Jesus and how he came to heal the brokenhearted, how he came to give sight to the blind, and how he came to set at liberty those who were depressed and oppressed. And here we are today as the people of God, getting ready to celebrate the season or the day of Pentecost. It's important to us as believers that we remember and recall the words of Jesus as it relates to Pentecost. He shares with the two men on their way to Emmaus that it is written that Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day. And repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning and Jerusalem. And you are my witnesses to these things. Jesus goes on to say, and I am going to send you what my father has promised. But you must stay in the city until you have been endued, until you have been endowed, until you have been clothed with power from on high. However, today, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. We just want to remind the church that we are on our way to Pentecost. Last week, we reminded the people of God that help is indeed on the way. We know that help is on the way because Jesus says to us that I will ask the Father and he will send you another comforter. He will send you another advocate. He will indeed send you another helper. And while Pentecost is on the way, Jesus pauses for a moment to demonstrate to the children of the Most High God how to pray. But more specifically, how to intercede on behalf of others. By definition, intercessory prayer is going before God on behalf of others. In the Bible, we can find many examples of those who were willing to intercede on behalf of others. In the 18th chapter of Genesis, we find Abraham interceding on behalf of Sodom and Gomorrah. Abraham goes to God on behalf of the people asking God not to destroy the city because of their sins. And if we simply dig just a little bit deeper, we can find personalities like Moses, Elijah, and even Daniel going before God on behalf of the people. These biblical 
characters understood the importance of intercessory prayer and going to God on behalf of the people. When we examine our text, we find that the whole 17th chapter of John is devoted to Jesus praying. The Bible says that Jesus looked toward heaven and prayed. Jesus says, Father, the hour has now come. In the vernacular of the old saints, Jesus was saying, Lord, I done done what you told me to do. In other words, Jesus was trying to say that his mission had been completed. He was saying that all the tasks that you have given me, Daddy, I have accomplished them. In Jesus' petition before the Lord, he possesses a God-given purpose. Jesus is not going before his heavenly father for some vain glory, but he goes before his father with a goal in mind. And Jesus' purpose and his goal is for the church of the living God to understand that they can have everlasting life. Yes, they can have eternal life. Jesus says, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as you have given him. And this eternal life is that they may know you, the only true God. Jesus is saying very succinctly and very clearly that eternal life is predicated on us knowing God for ourselves. That's why the Bible reminds us for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to, to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Yes, beloved, because God has sent his son, his son Jesus, to demonstrate to the world how to intercede on behalf of the people. There are just two lessons we can learn from the Gospel of John. The first lesson that I want you to learn today is that Jesus prayed for himself. In verse 5 he says, And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory of which I had with you before the world was. Jesus was praying to be one with the Father. Jesus was recalling what John says in the first chapter beginning with the first verse when he says in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus is saying, Lord, I want to unify with you that we may be as one. Yes, beloved Jesus prayed for himself. Jesus demonstrates to us that we must learn how to pray for ourselves. Yes, the Bible says that if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to purify or to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so it is that when we begin to pray, we confess our sins. We ask for forgiveness. We ask God to purge us with hot salt. We ask God to make us whiter than snow. We ask God to cleanse us over and over again. 
Bible says that when we go into the room and when we have closed the door behind us, that we pray to the Father who is in the secret place and this Father who sees us in this secret place will reward us openly. Before we begin to pray or intercede, we must pray for ourselves. We must ask God to give us the fortitude and the strength to go and stand before an almighty God. And God will hear our prayer. Paul wrote to the Philippian church and said to them, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, we must present our requests unto God. But prior to going before God, make sure we confess before his holy name. Jesus demonstrates to us that before we begin intercession, we must pray for ourselves. But Jesus also demonstrates a second thing. The second lesson that we can learn from the Gospel of John is that Jesus prayed for his disciples. In verse 9, he says, I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. In verse 11, I will remain in the world no longer. But they are still in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Jesus understood that he was leaving these disciples in a cruel, mean world, and he was asking his Father, Father, be a fence all around these disciples. Cover them under your blood. Protect them by your name. So it is that Jesus prayed for his disciples. And we too must learn how to pray for others. Jesus commanded us by saying, but I say to you, to love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you and pray for those who despitefully use you. Jesus understood that we were going to be in a world that sometimes prey upon the people of God, sometimes look down on us simply because we love the Lord. But Jesus says, don't hate them, don't hate the world, but pray for them. Pray for others that they may know the same God that we know, that God can save them, that God can heal them, that God can bless them. Yes, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus in the 17th chapter of John gives us an example of what intercessory prayer looks like. It begins by praying for ourselves, but it ends 
by us praying for one another. Pray with me. As we ask God during this pandemic to heal the land, Father, we thank you for the example of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for how Jesus completed his mission. And after he completed his mission, he asked you to glorify him that he might be one with you. Now, Lord, as we stand before you today, we stand before you not as a perfect being, but we stand before you with shortcomings. We stand before you as missing the mark. But God, hear our prayer. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then, Lord, our prayer is, is that you will heal the land. Lord, during this pandemic, those who are suffering and those who are going through COVID-19 or this coronavirus, God, we ask for a special anointing that you will touch them and anoint them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.